all stand please and receive the entrance of the family. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And shall direct your path. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from My help comes from the Lord who has made the heaven and the earth. He will not suffer your foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Lord is your keeper. The Lord is thy shade at thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. Lord will preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forward, even forevermore. You may be seated. Going to continue in this time of our family hour, and we're going to ask that you would use this remaining time to greet the family, to comfort the family, and to comfort each other. At the 12:30 hour, we'll come back again. Our service and celebration of life of this hour, brother, sister. May God bless you. May He keep you. Is our prayer.
to get your attention, please. Here the fellowship family has come to a conclusion. This time we're setting our hearts and minds on giving God honor, giving God glory, and giving God praise for this of our beloved sister, Benaya Bethea, who God, Bethea, who God has given her her wings, and she has gone home for eternal rest. But the Bible still tells us this still is the day that the Lord God has made. And we come to rejoice. Somebody just how to rejoice. Come on, say it loud. Say it with the We come to rejoice and to be glad. And the Bible also said, let everything that have breath, give God praise if you don't mind. Come on, put those blessed hands together. Come on, let's bless God in this place. Amen. We bless him. And certainly bless you. Because when praises go up, Blessing certainly will, will come down. This family, our heartfelt condolences go out to you. For God is still able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever think or ask according to the power that worketh within you. Amen. Amen. The Bible also says to cast your cares upon him, for he cares for you. We thank God for my pastor, my bishop, Bishop Lawrence, James London Sr., who's going to be our eulogist. Come on, let's give him a great big hand clap. Amen. Come on, we could do better than that. Amen. Taking time out of his busy schedule to be with you all on today. My name is Reverend Davis. I'm going to guide you through uh, this service as we get to give God praise, honor, and glory on this day. I'm going to begin with the scripture celebration will be found in the writings of the we need everyone to be seated doing the scripture reading amen because everything that we do for God should be done in decency and in order come on say amen, amen. the gospel according to St. John in the 14th chapter beginning the first verse, it reads thusly, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there ye may be also, and whether I go you know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I have read to you from John's Gospel, chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. And the word of the Lord is already blessed for the edification and sanctification of our hearts, minds, and our souls. Let every believing heart say amen. amen. This time every head bowed, every eye closed, every heart lifted. Eternal God, our Father, we come before your very presence with bowed heads humble hearts and even with tear-stained eyes but we thank you most of all God for putting us on the wake-up list one more time we thank you for your grace your mercy your love and kindness which is better than life itself and then we pray God that you might be with this family help them as they travel on the bridge over their troubled waters God that you might speak peace unto them while they're still yet in the midst of the storm I know that you can, God, and I believe by faith that you will for what you've done for others. You certainly do for them on this day that now that the spirit has separated itself from this body, your word declares to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. God, you promised to dry every tear that falls from our eyes. God, you said you would not leave us nor forsake us. You would be with us always, even until the end of this world. And God, we know you know shorter than your word for whatever you promise is still yet come to pass now we pray now holy spirit far fresh in this place anoint this family from the very crown of their heads to the very soles of their feet god we thank you that a word is going to come forth that will give them comfort in their time of distress and so god we're still looking unto the hills from which cometh our help knowing all of our help comes from you who made heaven and earth. And so we thank you for allowing her to pass this way, even just for a season to make a greater imprint and an impact on all of those who come out today to give your name glory, give your name honor, and give your name praise. But now, God, she's safe 
in your arms. And so we thank you, God, for what you've done. We thank you, God, for what you still yet to do in all of our lives. For when you call, we'll certainly have to answer. So bless this family and the blessings that they stand in the need of. Continue to comfort them as only you can. And we're thanking you now, and we'll thank you forevermore. It is in Jesus' name we do pray. And the people of God said together, amen. Now that's a good place to give God some praise right there. Come on. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. At this time, we're going to have a song of praise. To the family, <clears throat> from my heart to yours. Hold on just a little while longer. Hold on just a little while longer. Hold on just a little while. Cause everything is gonna be alright so Pray on just a little while longer Pray on just a little while longer Pray on just a little Moan on Moan on Just a little while longer Cause everything is gonna be alright Say pray on Just a little Pray on just a little while longer. Pray on just a little while longer. Cause everything is gonna be alright. Fight on just a little. Just a little while longer, cause everything is gonna be alright. Amen. Everything is going to be all right. This time, brothers and sisters, we prepare now to have our period of remarks. And those of you who have remarks for the family, we want at least five people to come and line up on this side of the sanctuary. Amen? We want you to uh, keep your remarks to no more than two to three minutes. Why would you say that, Reverend? Because you cannot tell her lifetime in two to three minutes. Amen? but you can glean something from her life that would encourage the family on a day like today. Amen? Could be a funny story because the Bible does say laughter is good medicine for the soul. Amen? So those of you who wish to come, we got one, two, three, four, we got one more.
And after we begin, please remain seated during this period. Amen. Amen. Let us begin. Hello, family and friends. I love you all. And during this time of sorrow, we need to stay together. Not just for what God gave us a gift. I'm the Naya, and we truly will miss her. As I stand here with my heart broken, I just want to say thank you, Jesus, for the gift that you gave us, for the love she gave us, for my great-grandchildren that will carry on through her. Thank you. Um, my name is Sade Bethay, and that's my little cousin. And I'm five years older than her. And we always hung when we was babies, always upstairs and stuff. And she actually taught me how to braid when she was like three. And it was crazy, because I'm like, what is you doing? And she's like, she's braiding. And I'm like, we told you that. She's like, my dad. And I'm like, what the? Where he at? And I'm like, Richard. I was mad at you for like three weeks. And I was like eight years old. Because you ain't teach me how to braid. But when we got older, it was crazy because she had a baby before me. So I'm like, who pregnant and stuff? But I'm going to miss you so much, cousin. And I love you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Tyra. I'm Sabrina's mother, and I am Lanaya's grandma. I'm Grandma Tyra. So I, I just, first of all, I want to share a scripture with you guys, and it's in the Bible in Revelation chapter 21, verse 4, and it tells us <clears throat> that God is going to wipe out all the tears from our eyes. There will be no more mourning, no more death. So those days are coming, and they'll be coming soon. And I also would like to share with you guys John 5, 28 and 29, which says not to marvel at this, meaning death, because the hour is coming in which all those in the memorial tombs will hear Jesus' voice and come out. So this is just temporary. Lanaya is asleep. She's resting, and we will see her again. And I have a poem that I want to share with you guys. It's Lanaya's not gone. Ease your grief, she's not gone, because in our hearts she lingers on. Her smile, her laugh, her special way will comfort us from day to day. You will feel her presence in the breeze as it dances gently through the trees. And it's her face that you will see when you're in need of company. At any time you can recall the love you shared, you saved it all. And in time more than, I'm sorry, and in time more than anything, you'll find peace in just remembering. I will see you in paradise, Lanaya. Love, Grandma Tyra. That was beautiful, Tyra. Um, Oh, thank everybody for being here. Like, oh my gosh, y'all just turn around. You guys look beautiful today. Y'all really showed out and came out for Lanaya. Uh, Lanaya was an angel. She was, she was so wonderful. Um, Tonya, is, I know it's hard losing your baby. It's always hard losing your child. And I really, I share tears for you guys. Um, uh, uh, life is eternal. Um, life encompasses life. Life is, we're all interconnected. So just how Tyra said from the scripture, 
you know, we'll see her again. You know, it, it, death is a part of life. It's a means to an end. So just how life is, you know, like an ocean. You know, Lanaya, she just, she just was like a raindrop that fell back into the ocean. She went back into life. So I really feel her in this room because she's still here. I'm talking to her right now. I'm talking to you, girl. I know she hear me because I feel her more than I've ever felt her when she was here those past 24 years. So, Tony, feel good. Sabrina, you guys love those kids. You guys, oh my God. But you and those kids feel comfort that she's watching over you guys. Feel comfort, everybody, that she's looking down and watching over us. Because when the time comes, she has her new life. And, and I'm happy for her. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Please bear with me, please, everybody. Um, my name is Bree. I'm Lanaya's cousin-in-law. I'm Sabrina's niece. Um, trying to keep this as short as possible, but um, being the last one, I might, might take a little minute to. Um, I caught myself running away at age 16, um, and I ran to my, my favorite auntie, one of my favorite aunties, and I remember I married into a Muslim family. And even with my own biological family, Lanaya never judged me. I, I wore a hijab, I wore a baya, and Lanaya, she, she always saw me for who I was. And I remember talking to her, she, we was close in age, and I remember always talking to her and telling her my so-called business. But those, those memories, I will, I will forever hold and cherish with me. Lanaya, this is crazy. This is crazy. This is wild. Never in a million years would I think I would be sitting here. I currently deal with seizures. So my biggest fear is that she seized while she was on that road. And I hope that didn't happen. But we all wish we had a night here just a little bit longer. That smile was contagious. I don't care what she was going through. You never knew. She always was smiling. It was like, girl, do you have problems? <laughs> She always smiled. And that right there, that's, that's what's gonna carry us on. And hopefully with this, it brings family closer. Like I said, I deal with seizures and that caused memory loss. So I don't remember much anyway, but I remember Lanaya. I remember Lanaya. So everybody just stay strong. And to all her siblings, I lost my brother. To all her siblings. This don't get easier. You just learn how to deal with it. You just learn how to cope with it. But you're going to have moments where you think you got it all together. You think you good. Richard, you're going to think you good, baby. Then you're not going to be good. But that's part of life. It's part of the process. But I'm here to let y'all know. I'm y'all big cousin. Each and every one of y'all, the ones I don't even know. I'm y'all big cousin, Bree. I'm on Facebook, Bree, Bree, Bree. Anytime anybody on here need me, I don't know how much I can say, but smoke some, drink some, just sit in silence, <laughs> anything. I'm here, forever here, everybody. I don't know if Juanita ain't here, but to a special to her, I forgive you, girl. We cousins. We family. Amen. Relay that message to her. Let her know we family. Despite it all, I would hate for it to be me or her here. We are family. And we got to stick together through it all. I love y'all. 
Hey man, come on, clap your hands for everyone that came to encourage. Come on, clap your hands for everyone that came to encourage the family through this spoken words of remarks. And this time we're going to have the reading of the obituary of Kamisha Jones. If you're president, we're going to ask. Okay, Brother Richard is going to come. Come on, say man for him. The exclusive story of Lanaya Janae Bathia. Lanaya Bathia was born on February 27, 1998, to Antonia Brown and Richard Bathia in Detroit, Michigan. The oldest. Naya, as she was affectionately called, was baptized at an early age at the New Jerusalem Temple under the leadership of Bishop Lawrence J. London. As a youth, she last attended Affirming Love Ministries under the leadership of Bishop Laverne and Kim Simpson, both located in Detroit, Michigan. Naya was educated in different school districts, including Detroit, Southfield, and Ecorse, graduated from Oak Park High School. Lanaya loved being a great mother to her children, listening to her music and cooking, especially Chicken Alfredo. Took a strong interest in doing hair, lashes, nails, and wasn't, she wasn't an outgoing person, but when she did go out, she, was knew, she knew how to enjoy herself. She was the type of person that said what she meant and meant what she said. She worked hard and led by example, especially on how to be a good mother. Naya had a great personality, and when she walked in any room, she lit it up with the joy of her presence. She has always been a devoted mother since the age of 16. Naya loved being around family and friends. For the most part, she was a homebody and just strived to make sure her babies were great. That's a fact. Naya loved her nephews and niece, fact, as her own. Naya would help anyone and would give her last to whoever needed it. If you knew Naya, you couldn't help but to love her. And if she smiled or talked with you, that beautiful, squeaky voice in your presence, it warmed your heart. She will live on in our spirits forever. Naya worked last, Naya last worked for FedEx. Naya has had a couple of other jobs, but the staff said it was a pleasure working with her. Naya leaves to cherish her memories, her three beautiful and intelligent children, one daughter, Skylar, and two sons, Imani Jr. and Owen. Her fiance, Imani, her mother, Antonia Brown, and Sabrina Horton, her father, Richard Bathia, her maternal grandparents, Anthony and Lisa, and her paternal grandmother, Dorothy Bathia, her adopted grandmother, Fazia Palmer, her step-grandmother, Tyra Horton, her godparents, Raina McGaffey and Damon Chu, three brothers, Richard II, Jordan, and Linnell Jr. Two god sisters, I mean two stepsisters, my bad, Shabria and Cheyenne, and Promise, that's three, my bad. Oh yeah, D Lo too. Oh, two god brothers. Lowski and Keith. Uh, six sisters, Michaela, Kaylin, Jalen. Devin, Kamisha, Aunt, Myrna, Tamika, Antoinette, Nicole. Uh, Kamisha. Yeah. Oh, two nephews, Zaire and Aiden, and niece, Zoe. Can't forget about them. Where was I at? Huh? 18 aunts, you guys know who you are. <laughs> 11 uncles, you guys know who you are. Uh, what, we get, what else we got here? 11 great aunts, you guys know who you are. 
four great uncles. You guys know who you are as well. That's it. The end. Come on, we could do better than that. Come on. Took a lot of strength, took a lot of courage. Come on, clap your hands. Amen, amen, amen. Certainly like to thank this brother for his proficiency in pronunciation, his participation on the program. Certainly meant a lot to the family. Come on, say amen. amen. This is a celebration, y'all. We know how to celebrate, amen. This time we're going to have another song. This time and after the song, we'll have a word of comfort from my bishop, Bishop Lawrence James London. Come on, clap your hands one more time. To the family, I say be encouraged. <clears throat> the Bible tells us that in all things to give thanks and so I say, what are we so thankful for? What are we thanking them for right now? We thanking them because for one, we're right here today for a celebration. And when we celebrate, we're thinking about and thanking all the good memories and all the good times. So I just say, be encouraged. I've had some good days. And I've had some hills to climb I've had some weary days and some sleepless nights but when I look around over all of my my good days I'll weigh my my bad days and I I won't complain sometimes the clouds hang low I can bear that's when I ask, Lord, the question why? Why, Lord, why so much pain? But, but he knows what's best for me. Though my weary, my weary eyes, they can't seem to see. So I Come on, let's give her another hand clap of praise. God has been good to me. I wonder if there's anyone else in here who 
know you can say that God has been good to you. I didn't hear but a few folk, but we all need to know if nothing else, he woke you up this morning. It was not your alarm clock, it wasn't your radio. Your significant other didn't shake you and wake you up. It was God that woke you up this morning. And if for nothing else for that, you ought to give him some praise. Hallelujah. We honor him. We give him all the glory, the honor, and the praise this afternoon. Thank God for our sister, Reverend Davis, and to the Pi Funeral Home, to this family, this mother, to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, we're here today for celebration of Lanaya. And oft times in these situations, I won't be but a couple of minutes, in these situations, and especially under these circumstances, we certainly always want to ask the question, why? You know, and uh, if you came to see if a preacher was going to stand up in here today and give you that answer, then I'm not he. Because the one thing that I can tell you that I know about God is that God doesn't give us any blueprints of our lives. He does not tell us what's gonna happen. We don't know what each day holds for us. And if he did give it to us, then that would wipe out the significance of having him in the first place. Because those of us who believe in Christ, is anybody here? who believe in Jesus Christ. Those of us who believe because Zaniah did, Lenaya did, I, I baptized her. And you get baptized because you say, I believe that Jesus died, that God raised him from the dead, and I believe that he's coming back again. That's all I asked her. You know, it doesn't matter what kind of life you live, don't matter what you do, even after that. Because once you accept him, you're saved. I say once you accept him, you're saved. You don't have to jump no pews, you don't have to be in church every Sunday. You, you ain't gotta be speaking in no tongue. Uh, 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 whole lot of church folk always say gonna bust hell wide open but it's about your heart and what you believe and how you love and how you treat one another. Amen. And, 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 and I know that, that she was that type of young lady. So uh, uh, it takes faith. It takes faith in Christ to make it through these situations like that, like this. I, I heard one young lady say that sometimes it'll never, you never get over it. You don't get over it, but you get through it. Yeah. Amen. You, you get through it because, listen, all of us sitting up here going to have to be right here one day somewhere. I don't care how young you are, how healthy you are. I don't care if you take your medicine, if you jog. I don't care who you are. One day, you're going to have to give up the ghost. And then the thing about that, the importance about that is knowing Jesus makes a difference. With this casket wide open, and as beautiful as you have her here, she's not there. She gave up the ghost. Listen, let me explain it like this. When God created us, he made us from the dust of the earth. He formed us in his likeness and in his own image. When he did that, he blew the breath of life into us, and man became a living soul. So when we inhale, 
he exhales. When we exhale, he inhales. And the last thing we have to do on this earth is to give back to God what God gave to us. She's not there. The other day when she went, she went back to where she came from. So the lady who stood and said that they who die in the Lord don't die, but they live is true. It's correct. Wherever God is, wherever Christ is, that's where she is. And good thing about it all with these babies and with you, mama, you know you got an angel watching over you. And all of us who loved her know we got angels. Now that's, that's, that's all I can say about Lanai. Let me sit down by saying this to us. Because we got to come this way, we need to recognize with all the stuff that's going on in this world today, we need a savior in our lives. You don't know whether we're going to make it to the cemetery or not. So much stuff is happening. So many things are going on. And every time you turn around, and sometimes even as preacher pastor, I get disappointed with what goes on in this world. And I don't get disappointed with God like many people do. I don't get disappointed with God because I, I, I know who he's been good to me. I know what he's able to do. I know he's able to heal sick. I know he's able to help those who are alone and be a company keeper and a mind regulator. I know he's able to do anything but fail, but I get disappointed sometimes because God don't do everything that he can. Because if he could do, if he did everything he could, then why don't he just stop some of this stuff that's going on? Uh, shootings in the schools and, and I get angry sometimes I, I, as a preacher I, I, I told my people the other week I, I get angry because I feel like David sometimes David if any Bible readers in here know that even though David wrote so many Psalms and some of those Psalms David was asking God Lord kill my enemy Kill their daddies, shoot their dogs. He, 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 he wanted God to dismiss those who didn't treat him right. And sometimes I feel like that. I, I wonder why the young man can go up on the roof and shoot people who are watching the parade. And then they arrest him and he going to live. I, I wonder why Putin can massacre and kill all those people in Ukraine for no reason whatsoever, and he's in charge and then threatening and bullying everyone else, talking about if you do anything, it's going to be a war. I, I, I think he should be dead. I, I, I get upset when there are children who are in hospitals with cancer and ain't did nothing to nobody and ain't had a chance to live, and then they got folk on the street selling drugs and don't care. Now, I get upset when I think about people who have never done anything to anybody and some folk get sick and stay sick for so long and then some folk don't care about nobody and don't ever get a headache. It's not that God ain't able, it's just that he don't do everything he can. And so therefore, when I think about that, I recognize that sometimes God, we got to deal with what scripture said, that he lets to let the rain fall on the just and the unjust. And it's not that he's not fair, but it's that we make terrible decisions. Sometimes we don't do what we need to do because of how we are stressed out and because of we don't have anyone to turn to. I come to you to introduce a Christ who will be with you through thick and through thin. I come to you to introduce to you a Christ 
who is not only here today, but is here forever and ever. We're living in a world, and you know, we only got 24 hours in a day. But we're living in our 25th hour. And I say that because we're living in a grace period. So many of us have wasted time doing things that we've had no business doing and hating people we shouldn't hate and holding grudges. And God is letting us live to give us the opportunity to right those wrongs and to make things better and to come together at certain times such as this. They asked Jesus, and I'm finished. The disciples asked Jesus at one time when they passed the blind man on the road. They said, Master, who sinned that this man be blind? And Jesus said, they said, did his mama sin? Did his daddy, who, 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 did he do something? Jesus said, no. No one sinned. He's blind that the power of God may be made manifested. What does that mean? Why is she here? She's here so that we can come together. It's a terrible, t terrible thing that sometimes God has to pluck some of us away to bring some of us together. It's a terrible thing that death has to be the thing to bring us together. I don't know what the girl was talking about, but she was talking to somebody when she said, I'm sorry, I apologize, or I forgive her, or something to that extent. It's a shame that sometimes these things have to happen to make us recognize how foolish other things are. Brothers and sisters, if there ever was a time that we need to come together, that time is now. Do not let this young lady's going home to be the glory be in vain. If you have issues with one another, let this be the situation that brings you back together. If you and I have been speaking with one another, it's time to clean up and straighten things out and recognize that we don't want anything else to happen to bring us together to make us think about what we should have done in the first place. Love, my brothers and sisters, is what family is all about. And I guarantee you today, and I don't know too many of y'all, but I guarantee you today there's some folk ain't speaking to some folk. Some folk don't like, I, I, and I ain't got no real issue. I just don't talk to her. I don't like him. They know what they did. And we running around holding grudges. I didn't come to give you a preaching sermon. I came to hopefully open somebody's eye and help you hopefully to understand that time is winding down. And if there ever was a time for us to come together as family, that time is now. David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I fear no evil. Somebody said, that's my favorite psalms. But I love all the psalms. You can get lifted. If you want to be lifted, go to the psalms. Yeah, bless the Lord, O oh, my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Go to the Psalms. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help because all of my help cometh from the Lord. Go to the Psalms. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Go to the Psalms, and David in that Psalms, in that 23rd Psalms, said, the Lord is my shepherd. And you know that's good. He said, I shall not want. And you know that's good. He said, he maketh me to lie down my head beside the still water. He, he restored my soul. 
He said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And that's the only thing that's bad in that song. The shadow of death. The shadow of death. The shadow of death. He said, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. I come to tell you, my brothers and sisters, we're walking every day of our lives in the shadow of death. But the only thing that could take us through that is that the Lord being our shepherd would help us to make it through that valley and to the end of that Psalms where he finally said, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's where we want to be when we have to go through the valley of the shadows of death. I pray today I pray today that the love of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit be acceptable in your sight, that you can accept him, that you can walk with him, that you can love him and know that he loves you. And then you can't help but to love one another. And then when this life is over, Somebody said in a song, some glad morning, when this life is over, I'll fly away. You'll see her on the other side. Until then, get to know him in the pardon of your sins. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask the undertakers to come. And you will have your final viewing we're going to commit the body and then I think they're going to want you to go to the cars and not fellowship but get there so that you can get to where you have to go for the chariot the horse to the cemetery so won't you follow their instructions this is before they come, this is for the immediate family only. So we're going to ask you to please follow the instructions. Stay seated until the family has view. Amen. Some glad morning when this life is over. Fly away I'm going to A home Where joy Shall never end I Fly away Just a few more Shh. Weary days in thee I'll Fly away I'm going to that home where joy shall never end. I fly away some glad morning. When this life is over, I fly away. 
I'm going to a land where joy shall never end. I fly away. you stand 
Won't you stand? I like for those who know the work of prayer to pray for this family. Prayer does change things. And as we prepare to leave this place, make sure you keep them in your prayers. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God, to take from this world the soul of our deceased sister. We therefore commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking forward to the general resurrection in the last day, which is to come, when the dead in Christ shall rise. I heard a voice from heaven saying, right henceforth, blessed are the dead that die in the Lord, for they shall rest from their labors. Let us pray. God, our Father, we come once again thanking you for what our eyes have seen, ears have heard, what our hearts have felt. We thank you for your word today. Thank you for Bishop London, for your word is still a light. So we thank you. Now bless this family, the blessing that they stand in the need of. Hold them in the hollow of your hand. Continue to speak peace to their grieving hearts. And then as we journey to the last mile of the way, after we've gotten there, Lord, this body, we thank you, God, for her life, her love, her legacy. May it continue to live on in the hearts of her loved ones. God, and know that you make no mistakes, that you're worthy even now of all the honor, the glory, and the praise. But it was you who gave her to us, and it was you who came back for one of your own. Now help us to live a life that's pleasing unto you. For when you call our name, we'll be able to hear you say, servant of God, well done, that thou has been faithful just over a few things. You promise to make us ruler over many. It is in Jesus' name we do pray. And the people of God said, amen. amen. Won't you do me a favor and just look at somebody, whether you know them or not, and say to them, I love you. Amen. Somebody needed that. Amen. Now we want you to prepare to go to your cars, those who are going. We, well, they want you to sit down first so that they can escort the family out. So if you would just wait until the family had preceded you out. And then after which those of you who are going to your cars or going to the cemetery, go to your cars and follow the instructions of the Pi family. Would you please clear the aisles? Would you please clear the aisles? Please clear the aisle. Thank you. Thank you for being so kind. We need ladies for the flowers. Six ladies, would you come for the flower? Anybody ask you? Where I'm going, six ladies, where I'm going, soon, if you want to know.
Paul Bears, won't you come and line up to my right? Paul Bears, line up to the right. Line up in twos. Going up yonder. Going up yonder. Going up yonder. To be with my Lord. Going up young, going up young, going up young. Ladies and gentlemen, can you, can you hear me please? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, we're going to West Lawn Cemetery, which is on Merriman Road in Michigan. Now before we get there, we'll be going down Inkster Road, but there's gonna be a horse and a carriage meeting me, or meeting us, I should say, just before Inkster Road. So when I stop, I want everybody just to stop the power barrels to be coming up to the horse and carriage in the hearse. And then we're going to load Miss, say her last name for me? Bethia. I want to say it right. We'll load her up into the carriage, okay? But we need everyone to go to the car so that we can get started because they'll be waiting for us to get there. Thank you so much. Everybody just hold where you are and please allow the family to exit out first. Hold, 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 one second, hold, I'm sorry.